Hey, Ryan, um, congratulations on all the success that you've had so far uh, with kicking. Obviously, uh, that's been a challenge for the Bucks, which is why they've had a revolving door at the position. I'm just wondering uh, what's been working so well for you. Uh, is it the fact that, you know, most of your kicks that you're attempting are, are you know, inside the 40? What What do you think has been the key to your success? Um, you know, honestly, I think that, uh, you know, Zach and Bradley, our snapper, and Bradley, our punter and holder, those guys are doing such a great job. Uh, I give a lot of credit to them. And, uh, you know, the big boys up front um, doing a great job protecting. I mean, it's really a, a team effort. And, um, you know, when you get an a, a award like this, I always think of it as a team award. So uh, I just want to give those guys a lot of credit. And uh, I'm thankful to have the opportunity to work with them. Thank you. Next question will come from Greg Allman. Hey, Ryan, I just want to ask you uh, about kicking in Tampa, kicking in this stadium. I know you've had three games here. Just, just how you feel, how, how normal it is to be kicking in that stadium now. Yeah, um, you know, Bradley and I have been joking about it. We've actually had a lot of, like, really, really windy games. And uh, right. so it's, it's, been, it's been a challenge, um, which is – it's been really nice to be able to pick Bradley's ear with him being here for a year, trying to get a feel for the wind. Um, and, you know, we go over there and practice during the week. You know, we'll go over there with Bones, and uh, B.A. likes us to go over there, so we'll go kick, you know, one time a week over there when we have a home game. And, um, you know, I think little things like that where we just try to prepare as best we can and um, try to be ready for the challenge uh, are things that are, that are beneficial, and um, hopefully we can just keep that going. How, how nice this has been for you in terms of just, just being what you wanted it to be? You, you don't sign with the team until September. Um, it's got to be nice to have things as consistent as they've been for you so far. Yeah, it's been it's been a blessing. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed being here in Tampa. Um, we have a really obviously we have a really good team, but we you know I've really enjoyed a lot of the guys in the locker room, uh, a lot of our coaches, and um, you know that's something that when you play in the NFL for for a while, I've, I've been fortunate to do that. You, you really grow to appreciate that, and um, that that's been neat getting to getting to be plugged in here with these guys. And uh, you know we're having a fun season. We're we're playing well, and um, you know we hopefully we're we're going to keep working and, and try to keep getting better. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Next question will be from Rick Stroud. Ryan, you know, you, you went through a lot. I mean, a couple of, of uh, injuries and you were a kicker. And it, was there a time where you doubted, you know, just how, how well you could come back? If you, has it come back faster than you thought it would as far as your, your accuracy goes? Um, you know, yeah, I think, you know, you kind of alluded to last season. Last season was, was difficult, um, you know, trying to – you want to get back out there and play so bad. And, you know, I was coming off of a, of a knee injury and um, – you know, I, the first 10 or 11 years of my career, I had been never really had any issues. And, you know, then one popped up last year. So it was something that, uh, you know, I certainly faced some adversity and, and had to fight through that. And last year was difficult. Um, but at the same time, it's um, it makes you realize how much you love the game, uh, how much you uh, are thankful for, for being healthy and, and the work that, that you put in to be able to go out and do what you love. And so uh, this year has been really neat to be able to um, to kind of get back into things. And, um, you know, I really enjoy putting the work in. Uh, we've I've had a great time. The stuff that we're doing here in the weight room and the training room with our staff here, um, that's been really fun. And uh, I'm excited about where it's going. I'm excited about the opportunity to hopefully keep getting better and keep getting stronger. And, um, uh, you know, I'm just thankful to, to have this opportunity. You mentioned the windy games. I mean, it, it was really people that weren't down on the field. We weren't, but we walked in that stadium. It was pretty tough, uh, you know, on Monday night against the Giants. So, when you have something like that, how, how do you approach it? Is that all a warm-up thing, trying to figure out directions and whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's definitely something where you, you go out in the pregame and you try to get a feel for what the wind's doing. Of course, you know, you may get to the start of the game and it, it may change. It may be completely different. Right. So um, a lot of it is just paying attention to what the flags are doing during the game. And then obviously when you get out there, you, you feel what it's doing on the field. And, um, you know, you pick your line and you just trust it the best you can. And so um, – so far, we've been able to do that pretty well this year, and uh, hopefully we can continue to do that because um, it, it, it is a certainly a challenge. Thanks. Yep. Next, we'll come, we'll, next question will come from Aaron Wilson. Okay. Hey, thanks for doing this, Ryan. Ryan, I wanted to ask you about Jack Easterby, who's the interim general manager for the Texans, who you know very, very well. Uh, him being an executive, just with your background with him, is it surprising at all to see his path and his career and kind of where he's come from and where he is now? you at all yeah great question um not at all uh jack is, is one of the most uh special people i've ever had the opportunity to be friends with in my life or, or be in contact with i mean he i've never seen somebody pour into people and then really invest in people uh the way that he has and it's genuine and that's what is amazing about jack he's 
he's a natural born leader. Um, he's a leader of people, and I think he would be a great leader of an organization. Uh, so I, I'm not surprised at all. I think that. Uh, you know, you, the, the Texans are, are in great shape having somebody like Jack in their building. And, um, you know, he's just he's just a special person. And, and, and I think that whatever he's doing, yeah, he's going to be successful uh, because he just he has those gifts to lead people and to, to lead organizations. And, um, you know, I think he'll do a great job there for a long time. Thanks, Ryan. I just have one follow up. Uh, you guys have been through some tough times together with the Javon Belcher episode. Mm -hmm. What did you see from him as far as being able to help you guys with the grieving process and trying to kind of pick up the pieces after that tragedy. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I've always thought that, uh, you know, the way that Jack, that was a really hard situation in Kansas City. Uh, it was it was something that you, as a player, you just never imagined you'd go through it uh, as, as somebody on the staff or anything like that. You, you know, your heart your heart's broken. And then to try to go through something like that was, was really difficult. You know, Jack was there and uh, – was really able to kind of na help navigate our team, our organization through that situation. And um, the way that he was able to do that um, was something that I always look back on. And uh, really it just kind of, I, I'm not sure what the words are, but the fact that he was there to help lead through that and the way that he did that um, is something that, you know, you just have a ton of respect for. It's a really, really difficult situation, something you never hope for anyone. And, um, you know, I, that's, I've always thought that in, in really hard situations, you, you kind of find out what people are about. And, uh, you know, Jack showed exactly who he is through that time. Next, we'll go to Scott Reynolds. Hey, Ryan, you were talking about the wins and also at uh, Raymond James Stadium. Uh, I guess statistically speaking, the south end zone is, is one of the most problematic end zones for kickers in the entire league here in Tampa. Um, have you noticed there, there being a difference in the south end zone as opposed to the north end zone? You, I don't think you've had any problems with it so far yet, but is that something that, that's real? Have you noticed that? Um, yeah, I think someone had mentioned that, that statistic to me. And, um, you know, I, tr I probably try not to think about it too much. Um, it's one of those things where, um, you know, you, you really just try to take it kick by kick and, and game by game. And so – um, it, it certainly it certainly gets windy in our stadium, and, and particularly this year, it just seems that we've had a lot of really windy. The the, the game days have just happened to come on on windy games and so, on windy days, and so um, you know that's kind of where we've been. But we're uh, you know we're working through that, and um, you know like I said, it's been really beneficial to have you know guys like Zach and Bradley, where I just trust them so much. They go out there, they really make my job easy, and um, and that's that's been a, a blessing. Thank you, Ryan, and congrats this week. Hey, thank you, appreciate it. Next, we'll go to Sarah Barshop. Ryan, I actually have another question about Jack Easterby. When did you first meet him, and why did you want him in Kansas City? Yeah, so uh, Jack and I have known each other uh, and really been close friends since our time at South Carolina. So I was in, in college, um, I don't know what years that was, maybe 06, 07, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, Jack was really doing a lot of things for all the sports at South Carolina. And, um Anyway, so I, you know, I was able to was able to meet him there, and um, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the second part of your question? Oh, why did you want him in Kansas City? What what was it about him that one made you reach out to him? Yeah, so um, our general manager at the time in Kansas City uh, had come to me and basically asked, um, you know, why do we we were with our some of the or the the groups, you know, whether it was the CHAP or the Bible study or some of the things that we had going on in the organization, um, some of the player uh, involvement things, it just there weren't very many guys coming. And um, our general manager came and asked me why that was. And I just, you know, we didn't have a chaplain. We didn't have a leader uh, in that position at the time. And so um, I told him that, you know, we don't, we don't have someone in that position. And he, he asked if I knew of anyone. And, I, you know, immediately Jack was the first person that, that came to my mind. And um, – you know, he asked if he'd be willing to come out. And I said, well, I can talk to him. And so, uh, you know, once Jack came out, you know, I think one time people were around him and you kind of get – when you're around a guy like Jack, you, you just – you know he's a special guy. He's a really sharp guy. He's uh, – you just want to be around him. You want to hear what he has to say. And, um, you know, I think he was able to really make a, a big impact as soon as he got there. And then, you know, our general manager, I think, saw that and they wanted him more involved. And so obviously that just kind of led to led to more and more things and more opportunities for Jack. And um, anyways, that was uh, that was kind of how that whole situation played out. Was there a moment when you're at South Carolina that stands out to you that in a way that he was able to help you, a situation he was able to help you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Jack and I, I think uh, there, there's been multiple times in my life where um, whether we, you're going through, you know, trying to make decisions or uh, just different things, different struggles, different battles that, that maybe you have. I, I may, probably won't mention the specifics of those, but, you know, we all go through different things in our lives. And Jack is that person that you can always go to and get great wisdom from. And, um, you know, he's able to see things really clearly. I think God's given him that gift. And God's also given him the gift to be able to connect with people and to pour into people. And so uh, Jack's one of the, the main people in my life that I'll go to for that. And, um and the crazy thing is, is he's like that with a lot of people. I've never seen somebody, um, I've never seen so many people that, or I've never seen one person invest and pour into so many people as Jack does. I, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he has the time to do it, but he, he does it. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that hopefully I've been able to be there for him as he's gone through some things. Um, but as I said, he's, he's a special person and I'm very thankful for, uh, you know, a lot of the opportunities that I've had and, uh, a lot of the things I've gone through, I'm very thankful to have a person like Jack in my life that I can go to and, and speak through these things because uh, he's, he's really been a blessing. Next question will come from Jay Knight. Ryan, I'm curious what Steve Spurrier used to do back in the day just to get in your head or psych you out when you like tried kicks in practice. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, first, you know, we always kick at the beginning of practice, and Coach Berger loved kicking and punting because he actually punted at Florida. So sometimes he'd come out there with his shirt off, and that was just enough, you know, to see the, the head, head coach with his shirt off. <laughs> but, uh, no, he would all, he loved it. He loved watching us kick, and uh, he would stand back there, and he'd be talking. He'd be chirping the whole time during a field goal period. And, um, you know, if, if he ever got you to miss one, he'd let you know about it. And, um, you know, it was fun. It was fun. It was cool to have the opportunity to play for Coach Berger. And, um, you know, it's, I, I really enjoyed that time, and, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a good experience. And once upon a time, you were Mr. Irrelevant at the time. Did that bother you? Did you take it in stride, good humor? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. Well, first of all, when your last name is – when you're a field goal kicker and your last name is suck up, <laughs> you already better be able to laugh at yourself. And then they, you know, they put the name Mr. Irrelevant on there, so you definitely got to laugh at yourself. But um, – you know, it, it was a fun week. It was a fun experience. Um, people sort of pull for the underdog. I think they like to see the underdog do well. And so I tried to embrace it. And, and honestly, for me, I looked at it as a blessing all along. I didn't know if I would get drafted or not. And um, to hear my name called, to have an opportunity to, to play the game I love and at least go compete for a position is something I was really thankful for. So I didn't care if I was drafted, not drafted. If I was the very last dude, I, it didn't really matter to me. I looked at it as an opportunity. And um, it was really neat how it worked out. Next, we'll go to Luke Easterling. Ryan, so much of, uh, of kicking success is about confidence. And, and for so many guys out there, it's, it's really a, a week at a time audition. You know, things can, can really go either way, depending on how a game goes. You know, at this point in your career, and you've been able to stick in the league for so long, and you're, you're having so much success now, what are some of those processes that kind of kind of keep you in that right mindset from a week to week, day to day, game to game basis? And if you had any advice for maybe young kickers out there or even guys in the league who are kind of struggling and worrying about that on a weekly basis, uh, what would you say to them? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, I always I always like to say you're, you're 0 for 0. You know, you, whatever you did last week, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever you did the week before that, it doesn't matter. And so the only thing that I focus on is, is the next kick, is the one that's coming up. And so I try to prepare uh, each and every week to try to go out and give myself the best chance to, to kick well every time that, you know, my number is called. Um, you know, the, if you kick in this league long enough, um, there's going to be ups and downs. And I think it's something where, I, to be honest with you, I think something that's just probably helped me to handle all that is that um, I try not to have my my whole identity or all of my uh, – you know, my thought process be revolved around, around how I perform. Uh, you know, I'm very thankful. I have a, uh, you know, I, my faith, I think, has helped me through that, uh, my faith in the Lord. And then my family, you know, thinking about, how, you know, just you have things to put football in perspective. I mean, I love, I love playing. I'm going to go out and give it everything I've got. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm trying not to let how I kick affect my mentality. And so I think that's something that's been a blessing for me is to try to have other things in your life and uh for me it's my faith in my family and uh you know i think the the kicking stuff takes care of itself when you when those two things are good last question will come from leo Haggerty. ryan when you're kicking on grass or kicking on turf is there a discernible 
and what do you need to really change from one to the other? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I, one of the things I'll try to do, like this week we, or last week when we played in New York, I tried to go in and hit some balls in the indoor because I knew we'd be on turf. And so you just try to get comfortable with it. I don't know that you necessarily need to change anything. Um, you know, I, most of the time I'll wear the same cleats. Occasionally if we have a rain game or if it's wet and the field's sloppy, I might look at using a different plant shoe just to try to get a little bit more grip. Um, but, you know, they're uh, – you just prepare for what you're playing on that week and uh, try to go out and get the best feel for it and uh, and go from there. All right, sweet. Um, that's all we have time for. Appreciate, appreciate you taking the time, Ryan. All right, yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it.